Hello crafters, Michelle here. Welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, then welcome. I'm so happy you found me. I have a beautiful flamingo wreath for you today. In today's crafting adventure, I'll show you step by step how to make this beautiful flamingo wreath. I found the sign at Dollar Tree and just fell in love with all the colors. I thought it was so beautiful and would make a perfect sign for my wreath. The wreath base is done in 10 inch mesh in the curl method. For your convenience, in the description box below is a detailed list of all the tools and materials I used to complete the flamingo wreath. Let me show you how to make it. For today's project, you're going to need a 14 inch wreath form that you can turn into a working wreath form. If you have not seen me put one of these together, I will put a link in the description box below to a short video that'll show you how to do this. Uh, if you don't have access to the description box, you can also find it in my playlist under Tips and Tricks for Beginners. You will also need a roll of 10 inch by 10 yard deco mesh. Now I picked this one up at Hobby Lobby. Hobby Lobby about every other week or so will have all of their deco mesh and their ribbon at 50% off and that is when I picked it up. Now this one regularly retails for $7.99, so let's see, so I got it for about $4 and you only need one roll to complete the base on this wreath, which makes it very affordable, even more affordable than Dollar Tree Deco Mesh. Now the mesh that I'm using is called Poly Pro Mesh Ribbon, it is weatherproof but it does state on here extended exposure to direct sunlight will cause fading and loss of shape. So just keep that in mind if you're wanting to put this wreath outside. Now to prepare your mesh, you want to cut it into strips at 10 inches. Now I prefer to use a rotary cutter. I like it because I get a much cleaner and more even cut, which helps you to reduce fraying. But if all you have is scissors, that will work too. Now I picked this little rotary cutter up at Dollar Tree for $1.25. It works very well. It usually lasts me about eight months. Okay, you will need two pieces at 10 inches per bundle. I'm going to go ahead and finish prepping the rest of my mesh here, and then we'll come back and we will prep our ribbon. I have all my bundles cut and it gave me exactly 18 bundles and this is the amount of mesh I have left from that roll. We're going to uh, cut up our ribbon now. I got this package, I wanted to show you what it looked like off of Amazon and it comes with six different types of flamingo ribbon. It is all on a burlap base. I thought that was perfect, it gives me lots of options. And then I pulled this one out. This actually came from Dollar Tree from their St. Patrick's Day uh, selection, but you can use any green and white check. So I will be putting these two together, and then I will be putting these two together. These guys I'm gonna save for another day, but I will link in the description box below the link to Amazon to uh, get this package of Flamingo Ribbon. I have all my ribbon prepared, all my meshes cut. I still have quite a bit of the ribbon that I used. I even still have some of the Dollar Tree ribbon. So I have of each pattern, six pieces cut at 12 inches. Today, to make my bundles, I'm going to be using the uh, Bow Dabra. Now I purchased both the Bow Dabra and the Easy Bow Maker so I could test them both out and see which one I liked the best. Now there are pros and cons on both of these, but for this one I really do like to use it when I'm making bundles, especially when I'm having issues that day with my hands because it's hard for me to hold on to things. If you don't have one of these at home, 
You can also use one of the clips that you can get from Dollar Tree to hold your stuff together. And I laid out my ribbon here in the sections that I'm going to be adding them. So these are the two ribbons that go together for that pattern. And then these are the two ribbons that go together for that pattern. And I'm just going to alternate between the patterns as I go. Today we're going to be doing the curl method. And it's very simple. You just start at one end with your mesh and do a roll. Now you don't want to go too tight. The mesh will tell you how much. If you roll too tight, you'll know because the inside piece will stick out on the ends. Just pinch it in the center and either clip it or stick it in your bow dabra. Now you're going to need two curls per bundle. And then you're going to add two ribbon on top of that. Lay them on top, fold them in half, find the center, scrunch the center and add that. Then you can go ahead and add them to your wreath form. Lift it up, place the center where everything was pinched inside your pipe cleaner. We're gonna start on the outer ring first. You wanna pull that nice and tight. And give it a twist or two. And then you can trim your pipe cleaners. I usually leave just about a half an inch and then you want to push those down so that they face the back. Now that may not look like much right now, but once you get them all on there and they come up, it'll look really pretty. I'm not going to worry about the ribbon until I get everything onto my wreath form and then I'll go back and I will fluff out. Now when you're going around your outer ring here, you're only going to put ribbon in every other one. So this next one, I'm only going to do the deco mesh. If you enjoy hauls, crafts, and learning new craft techniques, please consider subscribing to my channel. I do upload new content every week. And if you hit the notification bell, you'll be the first to know every time I upload new content. Also, when you are placing your ribbon, you want to make sure when you're going on around on the outside that your ribbon bundle is on the pipe cleaner that's in between the two crossbars. The reasoning is when you go around and you do the inner ring, you're going to be putting it on every one and that's every crossbar. So this way it'll be on the crossbar on the inner ring and on the outer ring, it'll be in between. So it'll look nice and even throughout your wreath. So the next one here will have ribbon and I will switch to my next pattern. These are all two and a half inches and they are wired edged ribbon. Now, when you're uh, fluffing up your wreath, you want to make sure that your uh, bundles are facing this way and not this way. Otherwise, it won't look as full and you'll have a lot of mesh in the middle, which is not what you want. So you want to make sure that they're facing side to side like that. That way they will bunch up and it'll look much fuller and nicer. I'm going to finish my base and then I'll come back and we'll move forward and decorate. Okay, I have all my bundles on and I'm going through and just kind of fluffing everything out, making sure everything's in the right position. I've already gone through and fluffed out my ribbon on the inner ring. I'm working around on the outer ring. 
And as I fluff my ribbons, I like to kind of crisscross them. So on one side, I'll pull one pattern up and the other one down. And on the other side, I do the opposite. And as you fluff your ribbons, you want to pull all your ribbons so that they're facing the outside of the wreath. So as you can see, it looks so cute with all that ribbon and that beautiful pink face. The sign that we're going to be using is this one. I found it at Dollar Tree. I thought it was just absolutely gorgeous. I love that beautiful soft pink with the flamingo, and I really loved all the greenery around. So this is what we're going to be using to add to our wreath, is all these different items that are in the background. Now to attach your wreath, it comes with a jute cord. You want to remove that. Add a piece of floral wire, one through the hole, one over the top, and you twist it in the back. They just need to be long enough so that you can attach it to your wreath. And then in three other areas, I just glue down a full length pipe cleaner. Once that glue is fully set, then you can attach it to your wreath. And I'm going to be placing this right in the center. Now, once I get that placed, I'll go back and kind of refluff some of my ribbon so I can pull it down. Now, this is the reason why I'm pulling all my ribbon away from the center so that I'm not covering it up with my sign. I'm going to go ahead and get my sign attached. I have my sign on. I think that looks really pretty. I love how it goes so well with the ribbon. Now, the final item that I'm going to add to this wreath is I'm going to add some of these florals and some of these uh, greenery. This is a hibiscus garland that I picked up at Dollar Tree. I just picked this up on my last trip. And they had two colors to choose from. They had this really pretty pink and they also had kind of a yellow orange color. So what I'm going to do is, see it has these leaf sections and then the floral section. Okay. okay, so it looks like they just pop off. So what I'm first going to do is take a flower and I'm going to glue it into the center of the greenery there. And usually pull this little plastic thing off of the back of the leaves. That way you can take a little spike and push it through and get it to glue on a little bit better. Okay. Add a small amount of glue. And then push it through so that it's on the back of your little bloom there. And then we're going to take these and glue them into the wreath. And again, just kind of play with them, set them, arrange them how you like them. And then once you find their placement, then you can glue them in, just add some to the back and then glue it into the deco mesh. Place it in, and then once that glue sets up, that baby won't go anywhere. I'm going to get my florals placed, and then I'll come back and show you the finished product. And there you go, we're all done. I got all of my florals glued in. I did decide to add a little bit more greenery. I pulled out this, it's just called foliage. I picked it up at Dollar Tree. It kind of looks like a fern. I have a little bit of something like that here in the sign. So I went through and added a little bit more of that. I like it. I think that was the perfect touch to finish off this wreath. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. If you did, please give me a big thumbs up and show me some love in the comments. This really does help support my channel. Thanks again for stopping by. You have a great day. I'll see you next time.